memory usage. There. Uh, one of the other tabs, the, the other two tabs we saw under IntelliTrace events was uh, CPU usage and memory <coughs> usage. So we'll deal with those in turn and then we'll do some demos on that and have a look at uh, what the differences are between my version and Visual Studio 2015 update one. And then we'll get into um, visual or debugging with or tool, diagnostic tools without debugging. Uh, we'll have a look at that as well. So memory usage, uh, as it sound, uh, what it sounds like, allows you to take memory usage of your app, take snapshots of your memory, which is a neat little tool, which we'll have some fun with. We'll, we'll play with that a, with a bit. Uh, so that you can actually find um, the heap. And you can actually view the heap. And we'll, we'll have a look at that as well here. Um, again, you can see managed and native heaps. Uh, it's tied to the debugger of the project you're using. So again, when I went and looked in the project properties and I wanted to know if I was managed, native, or mixed, I wanted to go and look and see what debugger I was using. That is all related to how memory usage is being tackled and trapped. So you want to you want to know that, or you don't need to know it, but you, it's it's good to know uh, when you're uh, debugging your project. So. Uh, records only the time your application is running and filters out the time spent in break states. This is important because if you are sitting in a uh, debug session and you hit uh, a breakpoint, it's not still uh, tacking all that information for you. So just uh, keep that in mind as you're, as you're going along here. And you can snapshot the sections and deep analysis views. I'm not going to read it all. You probably already read it for me. So uh, these are all kinds of things that we're going to look at. And, and the snapshotting is, is probably the main point that you're going to want to take away from memory usage. Uh, CPU usage, as it sounds, uh, if you're pegging on your CPU and it's running slow, then you probably got a problem. And this is where you want to spend some of your time. Uh, if we have time, and we'll see how much time we have, there's another little tool I wouldn't mind showing you. Uh, depending on how fast we wrap this stuff up, we'll maybe jump to that other tool uh, before we do all the swag draws and have to get out of here. So uh, we'll have a look at that as well. Uh, so in this, the CPU usage is all about bottlenecks, um, how difficult it can be to know where to start, and uh, let you see all your functions, um, all the functions that are using the most the CPU. So that's all I want to talk about with this. We're going to have a quick demo on memory usage, and then we'll go from there. So. I'm actually going to switch projects here. I'm going to go to a different project. And again, this is a Microsoft project. It's called the Photo Filter Project. Um, these are all available online. I will actually give Lori the links if you actually want to play with these projects. This project had a Windows, um, it had a WPF, a Windows 8, and a Windows 10 version all wrapped into the solution. So I ripped out the the WPF and the Windows um, 8 versions, and I'm just left myself with the Windows 10. So when you get this project, you, you can choose whatever um, platform you want to play with on this. The main gist of this project is, is it's going to go out to a server that you designate. Um, it gives you a base server in the cloud. So this should be fun. We'll see how um, easy it is to get out to the cloud and grab some pictures and bring them back down on this Wi-Fi. Um, if it doesn't work, we, we can still kind of make do with um, without that. But uh, well, well, hopefully it'll, it'll be up and running. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go out there, it's gonna uh, grab all the pictures that are on the cloud, uh, make a collection, and then it's gonna rifle through them and just post them on, onto a page and display them for you. So yeah, we're gonna have some fun with this here. So again, I'm gonna just put a breakpoint in here. I'm, I've already played around with this. I know that load images here, I'm gonna just show you. Load images is gonna be the start point. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to go and get the images from the cloud. It's going to be an asynchronous call. It's going to go through and it's going to load them. And it's eventually, it's just going to bring them up into a file for us. And uh, it's all XAML related. It's going to be dynamic binding. And it's going to show it all nice and uh, neat for you. The pictures are, um, the thumbnails are really nice. The um, enlarged pictures are really ugly. So don't pay too much attention to those. But if I just go ahead and run this to completion here, we'll see how long this actually takes. I'm just curious if it's gonna it's gonna roll on for us. As this is running here, you can kind of see I had this steep rise here, and it's pegging like it's going crazy, and it's already and it's got another rise and another rise. All of a sudden, I've got like a ton of memory that's being chewed through here, and that steep rise again is we're launching a we're launching a project, so you're, you're bound to have some CPU rise, but that seemed really steep. So if that was a concern for me as the developer of this um, project, I would go in there and I'd start snapshotting and I'd start looking at that little section in there. So that's what we're going to do and that's what we're going to play with. So this is the completed project. 
um, or the completed version. Again, you can see we've got little nice little thumbnails on the side, and um, these are the larger pro uh, larger files here. And then if you want, um, I'm not going to do this, but because um, it'll blow it up because I didn't include the libraries, you can actually add filters and play around with the files and all that. So you can you can play around with that test project um, as much as you want. I just want to be able to say that this is what we're running here. So one of the nice features of memory is that we can actually take snapshots of where the memory is between the different steps of our process and between the different steps of our code. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set a breakpoint on get images from cloud. So just before it's, it's going to spike really high. And we're going to employ a couple of uh, neat little options here within memory. So over in process memory, you can see it's just starting to peak. It's just starting to rise, and we're at that point where it's going to start to take off here. What I want to do is I want to come down to the memory usage tab. So like, uh, just for reference, there's my events tab. Here are my events. Here's my breakpoint with my red hat. Here's all my events that I've taken. Uh, if I want to know what that event is, I could just click on all these little diamonds here, and it'll, it'll filter through. Or if I want to know, get to the breakpoint, I can just click any of these. Again, if I want to know what these are, I can work through that. Down here on the memory usage, or sorry, let me go back to that tab. There's a neat little item here which is called take snapshot. So you can actually see it, it's right here. This is actually gonna take a snapshot of the heap for me at this specific breakpoint. This is a great little tool that will allow you to say, uh, to see what's going on with your memory and how it's being chewed through at the moment. I'm gonna take a snapshot right here, and it was pretty quick went through and it's telling me that at, it, at 20 seconds, I'm on 20 seconds of the event timeline, I have 323 objects in play and my heap size is 22.83 kilobytes. So it's taken that little snapshot for me and it's going to allow me to, to um, do a delta on it in a second. So if I want to know what's, why get images from cloud is pegging here, I'm going to put in another breakpoint. Let the sucker run. Bring this down. And I'm going to take another snapshot. All of a sudden here, so you can already see that that's taken 5.6, or yeah, 5.65 seconds to bring all those photos back down from the cloud. So that's the delta there. I've gone up 3,040 objects, and my heap size has gone up 155.79 kilobytes. So just by taking those two snapshots, I can see the delta of all of this. If I want to drill into this, I can click in. So I go back to number one here. Within that snapshot, I get all kinds of information. So I can say, um, it'll show me the counts of all the different objects that are in play, what those byte sizes are, what the inclusive sizes are, all of that. If I want to compare the two in more detail, I can say I can go up to this compare option here, which is right here, and I can compare the two, and then all of a sudden, let's do this. It should take it for me automatically. And there we go. Okay. All of a sudden I've got the differences here again. So it'll tell me that the differences between the two files, the size differences between one to two, the inclusive differences, and I can keep going through as well. Um, if I want to know any of this information below, you can see that the, the, the table below is, is populating all of that information <coughs> down there as well. So that's kind of the information here that we want to talk about with memory. That is what is, that's what it's giving you. With uh, disregarding the snapshots, if I actually want to view the heap itself, again, I'm back over here. I got all that kind of information again. So I got all that kind of information and I got my, my count of objects and the, the byte sizes and all of that. So you can actually go in and you can play through the heap. You can see what's chewing up all your CPU and what, uh, all your memory and all of that kind of thing and uh, drill into all of this as much as you want and get down to the root, uh, the root cause of your problems. So 
That's the memory. And the main thing to remember on the memory is the snapshots. Taking the snapshots before and after a breakpoint, that's the way to kind of drill into all of this. Now I could have taken, I could have put snapshots here and here and worked my way all the way through and, and just keep going. But that was enough just to kind of give you an idea of what, um, what's happening with this. You can also manage your, your snapshots here. If you want to delete them, you can get rid of them. Um, just highlight the row and, excuse me, you can delete them and, uh, and take more snapshots and get medians and ranges and all of that. Um, so you, you're, you can play with that as much as you want. CPU, let's have a quick peek at the CPU here. The CPU is also, you can see that we've got all kinds of CPU that's going along. It's not going too crazy. You can kind of see here. But again, if I want to be able to scope through into this, I can zoom in, just keep going, and get all that get all that information. You will see over here though that to see the UPU uh, CPU usage details, you need to do the start diagnostic tools without debugging. And that's what we're gonna that's what I'm gonna show you next. This live CPU usage debugging is not available in the non-update one version. And that's the main difference between my version and maybe if you've updated to version one, you would be able to drill, you would see all the different events and you'd be able to drill into those. And I will show you what those events look like when I go to start diagnostic tools without debugging. Again, I didn't want to update this um, a few days before and then have to go through the whole update process again because the demo gods, they hate people like me. So um, they, uh, so, I apologize for not showing it to you in full, but uh, that's kind of what you would see when you're when you're playing around with this. So you won't actually get the actual details here, but if you hover over these events, you can kind of see what was going on. Actually, let me reset this. Let me set the view. You can kind of see a little bit what was going on, the milliseconds, the value of the processors, all of that kind of stuff. So at those spikes right there, you're you're pegging out 13% of all your processors on a quad four processor. Like you're pegging out pretty far if you're using, um, you know, almost uh, an eighth of all your processors just for this little event. So you might want to drill into that and have a look at that. So again, that's the kind of things that you can get out of that. 